Well, we learned that the vast majority of women are looking to feel better, whatever that means to them. They want to sleep better. They want to be less stressed. They have a high amount of anxiety and they're carrying a lot on their shoulders. Hey, this is the Wellness Essentials Podcast. We for short. The We Podcast is all things health, and wellness, a place where women like you can come to be their authentic selves and be a part of a community that supports them in their health journey and every stage of life. This is the podcast for engaging health and wellness entertainment with actionable steps you can take into your everyday life. No topic is off limits when it comes to health and women's lifestyle. Let's face it, being a woman comes with all sorts of fun. Hear real, raw conversations and teachings from experts and everyday women who have been in your shoes and get inspired to make things happen and have the tools to do so. This is the We Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Wellness Essential Podcast. Today we are here with Sarah Tupper who is joining us from Michigan and is one of the co-founders of Sarah Jane. Hi Sarah. Hi, how are you? Just wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us on the Wellness Essential Podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so appreciative of the opportunity. So I'm excited to talk further with you all about cannabis and wellness and women. Yeah, we're excited to talk about a subject that you don't hear about too much, might still be taboo in some circles. Um, So I have a lot to learn personally. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started with Sarah Jane? Like what, what made you start the company? Sure. Um, Jessica and myself um, co-founded the company about three years ago. And conceptually, the company really came to fruition based on kind of the combination of our personal journey with cannabis and with wanting to ease off the gas pedal in our relationship with alcohol. And secondly, um, really kind of developed some footing and some legs here in the Midwest when we realized that if we had questions about cannabis and how to incorporate cannabis and questions about how cannabis falls into kind of that women's health and wellness space, then there must surely be more of us out there and more women who had questions here in the Midwest. And that's really how we kind of sat down and came up with a game plan of how do we reach these women? What are they asking? What are they curious about? And how can we provide products and resources and dialogue around something that is still pretty stigmatized in certain circles? So that's kind of what started us on our entrepreneurial journey. Sarah, I have a question about your your launch, how long you've been around, and did you, because I follow you on Instagram, and I really like your branding, and I like some of the sort of cheeky things that you put out there too. So I'm curious, how did you launch the line to the public and get the courage to do this? Because it takes it takes a lot to color outside of the lines. Yeah, we were really, really lucky early on in knowing that if we were going to do this and we were going to make this a viable option in the cannabis space for women, that we really had to learn so much about the industry, both on the distribution and the production side, but also really dive in a little bit deeper to what our audience was and what they were looking for. So we did a ton of market research. Um, We hosted a variety of different focus groups slash happy hours slash social networking. We know that women trust women, right? And we all know that we get 
product recommendations and honest answers to questions that we have kind of through our group of extended women's networking, our colleagues, our mom friends, kind of wherever that community is, we really kind of took a dive headfirst into understanding what women were looking for. And very quickly, we're able to produce a line of products geared specifically to that beginning user, right? That cannabis curious woman, that woman who maybe knows a little bit about cannabis, but maybe some of the information is antiquated or had a previous experience with cannabis and didn't like it or wanting to understand different methods and different technologies behind how cannabis is absorbed in your body. Um, So that's really where we started. And we really thought about cannabis almost in the realm of a skincare or a wellness line, right? So what would you go to the store and look for, right? Like what would the basic package be and how would that look, right? Wanting to feel comfortable and on displaying the packaging or having it in a small pouch within your purse or your work bag. What did that feel like for women and what were they looking what were they looking for as far as that was concerned? So our first line of products that we developed was a line of products that we called the micro essentials. So a micro dose of cannabis, meaning a very, very small amount of THC, where you can really begin to customize your journey and your experience with the plant. And it was great. It was very successful. We learned a lot in the year and a half that we had that product line on the shelves. We learned a lot about manufacturing. We learned a lot about how important it is to partner with people who share your vision, who share your goals, who understand um, your target audience and what women are looking for. So we, we really were able to show that proof of concept through that first product launch. What are they looking for? What did you learn? What, like, what, do, what do we want? Well, we learned that the vast majority of women are looking to feel better, whatever that means to them. They want to sleep better. They want to be less stressed. They have a high amount of anxiety and they're carrying a lot on their shoulders, um, specifically during this time. Um, of a pandemic, right? You're, you're responsible for not only your household, your kids, your work schedule, you're at home. All of those lines are blurred. There's a lot less transition time. So you're toggling back and forth and you're expected to perform at 100% firing on all cylinders all day long. I think just evidence enough of trying to record a podcast with you ladies and me, you know, hiding in different rooms for my children so that I can really, you know, focus and concentrate on, on what I, what I'm trying to, the messaging I'm trying to convey. Um, so they're looking for better sleep. They're looking for better, uh, management of anxiety. They are looking to decrease their alcohol intake as they age because we all know how we feel Um, after a night of a few glasses of wine. Feels really good in the moment and feels really yucky in the aftermath. And they're also looking for solutions for better sex as they age, they're looking for some solutions as they approach menopause and go through all of these different hormonal changes. And what we discovered in specifically to the market in Michigan, because it's so brand new here, is that there aren't products that are really focused on all of these issues that women experience on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. right? There's lots of products that might not feel comfortable or approachable for a woman. There's lots of products with a very high percentage of THC. 
So that will affect your mind and your body very quickly and maybe make you feel out of sorts. There are a lot of products for experienced cannabis users, but there aren't that many products specifically for women who are curious about integrating smaller doses into their life. And there aren't people to ask. I've never delved into this world ever. So could you tell me even like what, what is cannabis? What is THC? Like what it, can you tell me the science behind it? Like, I just don't know anything about it. No, absolutely. And it's really fascinating because cannabis has changed so much in the past couple of decades. So what I find that most women think about what cannabis is, right? We're even reframing that word, right? We don't, we think about it as weed. We think about it as marijuana. We think about it as not understanding even the difference between the chemicals that are that make up the plant, right? So THC versus CBD. Um, We don't understand why you can buy a CBD facial oil at Target, but you can't buy anything that has THC that's from a marijuana plant at any other store other than a dispensary or a provisioning center. So there are a lot of differences and nuances in the plant. The cannabis plant is a female plant. So first of all, that um, makes me really happy um, because, again, it's all up to the women to do the hard work here. And the cannabis plant has numerous chemical components, um, being CBD, THC, and other um, nuanced um, flavors and herbal essences that make up the plant. And CBD here in America is a derivative of a cannabis plant. So it still kind of falls under cannabis umbrella, but it's a hemp plant. So that's where it kind of gets confusing because hemp is legal in the United States and the marijuana plant is not federally legal. So therefore, CBD can be found in both places, but the CBD that you have access to or availability to through all of the different products that you see, it, it's kind of become a buzzword. It's kind of a trendy thing, right, to incorporate. The interesting thing that we found with THC and CBD is that we find that they work better when paired together, right? So a good way to kind of differentiate that like on a kind of baseline informational level is that CBD will affect more of your body and THC is the chemical component that can make you feel that high in your head, in your mind. And since we know holistically, in particular with women, that there's a mind-body connection through all of the different body systems, we actually possess an endocannabinoid system that has the ability to break down all of those chemicals in our body and metabolize both CBD and THC. So that's kind of the baseline of it. Without going into too much like chemistry or biology, there are all different ways to clone seeds, clone strains, and The growers and the cultivators lately have become so incredibly sophisticated that they can, they really have the ability to grow particular strains that can help with particular symptoms. There's a lot of research in different strains and what works best for women, what feeling you're looking to achieve and time of day that you would use a particular strain and all of those different things. Then we kind of break it down too into the different methods that cannabis can be absorbed in your body, right? So smoking it is a method that most people are familiar with um, that can be used and that's absorbed directly into your bloodstream through your lungs. Edibles, I think, are a very common way that women feel comfortable in using cannabis because it's a little, it's more discreet. It doesn't smell. You don't need any type of like 
smoking apparatus or a lighter or anything like that. It's portable. It's easy to, you know, transport and put in your bag. And edibles are typically metabolized through the liver. So edibles will have a longer release time because it has to go through your stomach and your digestive system and be metabolized through your liver. Smoking or even a tincture, a tincture is absorbed sublingually through the tissue in your mouth, which is very thin, has a lot of blood vessels and nerve receptors. A tincture or smoking will give you kind of a quicker onset to some of those feelings when using cannabis. So it's really fascinating when you start to break down the science behind it, how your body has already has the ability to metabolize these chemicals within its own body systems and that it's a natural substance that's grown. So it's By no means a cure-all. I am not a physician. I am not a doctor. But many women have found really, really lovely benefits to incorporating small amounts of cannabis into their daily lifestyle. So that's, that's really where our passion started with cannabis and where our mission is really um, focused on being able to help women incorporate this into their life, answer questions, be open and honest, and provide resources for them. Because a lot of times there's a comfort level of really not knowing who to ask or where to find information. You're in Michigan, but Mm -hmm. you have limitations on, on how you can sell and where you can sell. And then do you have limitations on how you can market as well? Sure do. Yes. Um, That's the one really interesting nuanced thing about working in the cannabis industry that you learn very fast is that it's very highly regulated and regulations change quickly and you need to be flexible. So because we are an established cannabis company in the state of Michigan, we are only allowed to make and distribute products within the state lines of Michigan. So cannabis is tracked through a statewide database and cannabis cannot cross state lines. So it must be grown, harvested, processed, manufactured, and distributed within one state. Hmm. So Different companies go about that different ways. And when we look at once we have a more solid infrastructure here in the state of Michigan and we take a look at being able to expand and what that looks like from a legal landscape, we would either partner with another company in another state and utilize either a contract manufacturing agreement or a white label agreement, something like that, where they would grow, cultivate, process, and manufacture the cannabis for us under the surging label. So there are definitely options for expansion, and there are ways to ways to go about doing that. We just want to make sure we have a really solid footing here and a really, really in-depth understanding of the entire manufacturing process before we spread our wings a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We're still new to this industry and I am learning some really interesting things every single day. This might be a silly question, but are there a lot of women in the industry? You know, that is absolutely not a silly question and it's a really interesting one. Three years ago, there were. There were a lot of opportunities for women, and it became one of the fastest growing industries for women to operate at like a C-suite level or a management level. Since access to capital is typically a huge barrier for women in particular, when we look at who holds the percentage of wealth in this country and who is investing their wealth in startups, that is typically a very male-dominated world. And we have seen those numbers fall in the past few years. 
And that's one of our huge passions is to be able to engage women both at the entrepreneurial level and at the consumer level who are interested in getting into this industry and being able to demonstrate that there's space for everyone here. I hope that that number can change, but it has it has decreased significantly as it has become more regulated and more expensive. Mm-hmm. Those are probably the two largest barriers for women right now. The team at Checkable Medical is famously fussy about what goes into their bodies. Optimal health at every stage and every age is key to living a life you love. Choose better supplements with superior ingredients in simple, easy-to-absorb formats that fit into your daily life. Feel your best with Checkable Wellness. If you're ready to get started, check out CheckableWellness.com for more details. Your healthcare begins at home. Something I was looking into are transdermal patches and curious if you've looked at those. Like one, I really like the micro dosing. I think that that seems like such a good way to jump into something and not be intimidated by it. But I'm wondering about that product of, of transdermal patches because it's something that once I searched it, I was targeted on it and you can buy them on Amazon like Purity Hemp for pain relief. But then if you go to a state that, like California, you'll be targeted differently and you'll be targeted with the THC patch. So wondering if you know anything about that. Yeah, I do know a little bit about it. I'm not an expert in transdermal by any means, but a transdermal patches are a really, really great way for localized pain because it goes straight to the area in which you affix it to your skin. Mm. That's an awesome introductory to Mm -hmm. using cannabis as well, because you won't feel much in the head and Mm -hmm. it will be a very like localized pain relief. I typically see, I would say our demographic and higher, like almost arching into like the baby boomer generation Mm -hmm. has a high level of interest in transdermal patches just for joints, for arthritis, for those general aches and pains. And Mm -hmm. people have had a really high level of success with those. Um, A company I really love that makes transdermal patches, both CBD and THC, depending on the state that you're located in, is a company called Mary's Medicinals. Mm. They make an incredible line of transdermal patches. They make some different rubs and some lotions that are incredibly effective for pain, for relaxation, for massage. There's also a few different companies that have entered into like the oil and lube genre. Mm. Oh, really? THC and CBT infused lubricants, which is really fascinating as well, in particular for women as they approach menopause. Mm -hmm. And as they go into menopause, that becomes something that I really see that women have an interest in. Again, feels sometimes uncomfortable to walk into Mm -hmm. a store and ask a 26-year-old man (laughs) for questions about approaching menopause. Yeah. There's some incredible companies too out West doing a lot for menstrual pain Mm, as well really fascinating company named Hello Again, who is also a fabulous women-owned cannabis company. Very cool. And they make vaginal suppositories. So specifically geared towards pain relief and helping relieve symptoms of menopause. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the fascinating thing about cannabis is I think we've only kind of tapped the surface Mm -hmm. of the potential. And I do think women are such a unique entity in that space that there's so much more we could be doing and that cannabis has has so much potential to to help so many different women. So I'm really excited about kind of that frontier of all of those products and that innovation and bringing that technology to women in the Midwest. 
Yeah, I like this education piece of it because uh, <clears throat> it, you have a barrier that's up and a stigma that like, oh, I can't, I'm not a stoner and really let's, let's break those barriers down and let's learn about it. And something you said early on was about the use of alcohol and the effects of that. And just wondering about if we could talk a little bit more about that before we wrap up, how would a woman incorporate this? You mentioned parties, like with your friends, you have the stigma and even where do you research where you start? Like I'm in North Dakota and so is Laura, but if you could talk a little bit about that, when to use it, where to buy it, how to research it. Yeah. So it varies by state, unfortunately, because there is no kind of federal umbrella mm -hmm. that mandates any of this. But I can tell you that in a state that has medical cannabis sales only, a mm -hmm. really, really good start would be doing research into healthcare professionals that have the ability to prescribe okay. a medical card for you. Okay. In which case, then you would be able to bring a medical card into a dispensary, which is a store, a retail space. Okay. And what would you say if I went to a doctor and be like, oh, I... I need a medical card or do you say I have anxiety? Like So that's really funny too. That varies by state too, what the criteria falls under um, where you can apply and obtain a medical card. So in Michigan, it has gotten much more flexible as we've studied and as we understand the nuances of how cannabis helps people. So in Michigan, for example, something such as chronic pain mm. can fall under that umbrella for obtaining a medical marijuana card. Sure. The interesting thing about that is, is that medical cannabis is sometimes sold at different dispensaries than what they call recreational cannabis or um, adult use. Mm -hmm. You'll see that a lot too. Adult use cannabis is fully recreational. There is no criteria other than you, ha you have to be 21 or older and you can show your ID and walk into a store and talk to someone about purchasing um, recreational cannabis. So it really varies by state, but the first place I always go to are the state's licensing and regulatory affairs website. Oh, okay. So every state will have a government run website in which it will outline the possibility of obtaining a medical card, the criteria that they mandate, and a lot of people will be able to refer you to a physician mm -hmm. that embraces both cannabis use and traditional Western medicine as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really good place to start. I also really look at different dispensaries' websites, their social media, their Instagram. It will give you a really good feel for what that retail experience will feel like, okay. where they're located, how their products are displayed, how many different items they carry, because dispensaries can vary so drastically based on you know, municipality that they're located in, um, staff that works there, how things are, what it looks like from, you know, a shopping experience. And it's, it's different. I mean, there are some beautiful, beautiful provisioning centers here in Michigan. Um, sure, but I'm on a podcast right now. So can I take five minutes and can you come back in? I'm to look for one thing. Okay, but, but I'm, I'm I'm on a podcast right now. Can yeah. you shut the door? Thanks. Cute. Cannabis also helps with patience when you're dealing <laughs> with family. Um, <laughs> FYI, um, that was great. <laughs> Another thing that I really look for just because we love to live our mission in every way possible is 
I look for minority owned dispensaries. Mm. I look for women owned dispensaries. I look for who those people are. And if I can shop local, Mm -hmm. because when you go in and purchase cannabis, it's almost like purchasing anything else at any other local shop. So Mm -hmm. I'm in Michigan and I live in a city where there is only one dispensary that is locally owned. So that is owned by a person that lives in my town that I know. Yeah. And I like to make a point of shopping there Mm -hmm. because I know that it affects their livelihood. Right. Mm -hmm. And women are loyal consumers. Yeah. We know that for a fact, right? They hold and retain 80% of the purchasing power Mm -hmm. in their household or in their family. So I think it's great. I think it's fun to shop around and find somewhere that makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. And awesome bud tenders, which is what they call the employees that work behind the counter. Mm -hmm. Great bud tenders will understand. Bud tenders. Yeah. That is awesome. I didn't know that name. Isn't it fun? Yeah. Great bud tenders will be able to understand what you're looking for and recommend products and they use these products all the time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I will ask for a recommendation, Mm -hmm. but that comes with comfort level, right? That comes with doing some research and knowing where you're going to shop and feeling good walking in the door. A cool thing about Michigan now, though, is that a lot of these dispensaries have delivery. Oh, really? Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. You sometimes don't even have to go in. If you've been reading and doing your research and following the brands that you like and, you know, kind of figuring out what methods you want to try and you want to experiment at home, you can order online and place an order for delivery. You can drive through just the same as you have a drive through pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So there are so many different ways and we are working really hard to, to kind of develop different methods and look at different ways that we can touch women and we can reach them without them feeling like they have to break that comfort barrier of walking into somewhere that they're not familiar with. So I'm hoping one day that we have the ability to do like a subscription box or a holiday gift box or something like that, that really like those commerce models really understand what women are looking for. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for chic and discreet and sophisticated and convenient and just different ways that they can experiment in the comfort of their own home. Yeah. That sounds like so nice to have it as a subscription and and make it playful and and make it entertaining. Like yeah, that's an experience. I know, right? You know, and it's funny and like that you said that, I love because it can also be fun. Mm-hmm. It's okay for it to be fun too, right? Yeah. It's okay to put your kids to bed on a Friday night and get a little giggly and make a bowl of popcorn and hang out and decompress, right? Like it, it doesn't have to be serious either. We're kind of a no judgment cannabis zone. Yeah. And we kind of find that that's medicine too. Right. In Mm -hmm. a way, we all need to like let it go a little bit. Mm -hmm. We need to laugh. We need to embrace the chaos. We need a moment of just peace. Mm -hmm. I think it recharges you uh, rather than a alcohol depletes you. Absolutely. It makes you dehydrated, gives you anxiety. Yeah. You know, you just need to drink more and more to feel like keep at that same level. And then suddenly you drank way too much and you're going to have a bad weekend. Yeah. And we really try to reframe that experience too. It's difficult to compare to alcohol because for me, it's a completely different feeling. Mm -hmm. We're working really hard to kind of reframe that conversation on that piece of escapism, right? That like, oh, Mm -hmm. I've had such a crappy day, like mama needs a glass of wine or it's Chardonnay time or can't have a play date without a 
a cocktail type conversation. Mm -hmm. We are really, really looking at wanting to be more dialed in, more tuned in, more present with our feelings, with our family, with our behavior, with how we act and react to different situations. So for me, it's a really hard comparison, but it's a common question, right? Like, If I take this gummy, how will I feel compared to drinking? Yeah. And it's like, well, I know how I feel compared to drinking, but I don't know how your body will Mm -hmm. feel. And sometimes it takes, it takes that level of experimentation, right? Like the first time you had four glasses of wine and you overindulged and you felt like garbage the next day, did you quit drinking? Probably not, right? right? Like you probably said, oh, I really liked parts of that, but next time I'm going to do X, Y, and Z differently so that I don't feel like that tomorrow. So there's a sweet spot with cannabis too. Yeah. It's fun to experiment with and you don't you don't feel as yucky, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I would like for you to share how people can follow you and or follow Sarah Jane. And then are you open to questions? If they DM you in Instagram, is someone there to respond? Absolutely. 100%. Questions are part of our journey. They're part of educating our audience, but they're also part of educating ourselves on what women are looking for, what they're curious about. We are a small business. We are a two-person operation with some help from some consultants, some marketing, some PR, and you know, some some project managers, but it is Jessica and myself. So I always laugh when somebody emails me and they say, Oh, can you pass along to your marketing manager? And it's like, well, you got her. Yeah. Here like, I am. Or who am I speaking to? Or am I speaking to the CEO or the social media manager? And it's like, well, both. <laughs> so yeah. So we have a really, really active and engaging social community on Instagram in particular. That seems to be our platform that resonates directly with, with our audience and with the women that we're speaking to on a daily basis. So you can follow along our journey at your dot Sarah with an H dot Jane. We also have a website, your com. We have a Facebook page as well under your Sarah Jane. And as always, all of our emails, we're pretty transparent. We're pretty out there. You can email, you can DM, you can chat, do whatever you need to do to get a hold of us. And typically within a few hours, we can either provide some type of response or say, that's a great question. Let me do some research on that or point you in the direction of an expert that can help answer that. That's awesome. We love it. We love the interaction. That's that's part of this community and, and part of what we're working towards. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you shared that because that's why I wanted, that was my attraction to bringing you on is that I think just a lot of people need an approachable outlet to ask questions to. And then almost the permission to do their own research and that you're not a bad person. It's okay. And uh, there are a lot of options out there. And what's best for your body, as with anything, is best for your body. Absolutely. Yep. Redefining what the stoner looks like, right? Yeah. She doesn't usually look like the Midwestern mom. And that's, that's kind of what we like. We like to reframe that. In the carpool lane. Exactly. In the carpool (laughs) line, talking about the benefits of cannabis. No, but part of our journey and part of our mission when we, when we wrote our plan for Sarah Jane was that we would be open and unapologetic about both our cannabis use, our cannabis journey, and the ability to answer questions to, to anyone who may, who may approach us. So that's, that's part of the transparency. Very cool. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really great to hear about your story and congratulations thank you, on Patty. being fearless. And this is a great wellness opportunity for us all to do more research on. So thanks for being our guest, Sarah. 
Thanks, Patty. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. It was awesome. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the We Podcast as much as us. If you want more wellness goodies, head over to the wellnessessentialspodcast.com for show notes, links, and resources mentioned in today's podcast. Remember to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to get all the wellness details as soon as they are released. Cheers to living your healthiest and happiest life.